I'm here at an AUSA meeting honoring Ted Crozier and celebrating his life and the accomplishments that he has given to this community and to the Army as a whole. I'm here talking with Command Sergeant Major Herndon. And he came in to the military to tell in of Ted Crozier's uh, stay here at Fort Campbell when he was transitioning into mayor and in Clarksville. Tell us about the impact that Ted Crozier had in your life. Uh, as, as I'm an aviation soldier, which Mr. Crozier, Ted Crozier's uh, background is aviation. When I came to Fort Campbell the first time, he was the chief of staff transitioning out of the Army for retirement. Uh, and as an aviation soldier, he played a large impact in the transformation of aviation from the early 80s to where it is today. Uh, as a soldier on Fort Campbell, as the chief of staff, his heart's always with the soldier. His intent of decisions and those ideas are soldier driven. Uh, I was a young soldier here with a family when he was the mayor of Clarksville as well. So just the changes in the last 30 years that he was a part of, maybe planted the seed on, are just amazing. At this time, I would like to introduce Major General Deese. Well, thanks to Cheryl and to her leadership of this uh, chapter of AUSA. It's good to be here. Uh, I know that within this audience, we have many people who could stand here and do the same thing because all of you have seen different facets of uh, Colonel Wild Turkey Ted Crozier. Uh, I'll give it my best shot here in a minute. Uh, but first, uh, you just applauded for me, but in reality, I recognize in a group like this, I'm merely a symbol, and so you're applauding our great troops, our soldiers, and their families. So, right? Okay. And, and sometimes maybe you would ask the question, where would we be without them? Uh, where would we be maybe if those great veterans of times past uh, hadn't been at Iwo Jima, or at Normandy, or at Bastogne, or at Birch's Garden when they shut down the Eagle's Nest uh, under Hitler uh, in the great 101st? Uh, where would we be without them, you might ask? Or where would we be without our soldiers today? And gratefully, we don't have to ask that question because they have always been there. We are the land of the free and the home of the brave because of our great soldiers. Uh, and I, I think we recognize that. And then where would our soldiers be without the families? You, you must recognize that our soldiers have steel in their backbones because of the home front. And if we don't make the home front work uh, in, the, in the military uh, setting, then it's not going to work. And so I, I refer to those uh, wives primarily, sometimes male spouses on the home front, as the great bakers of cookies and those great uh, senders of letters and the commanders of the stroller brigades. And you know what I'm talking about. You've been out at the airfield many times. Okay, goodbye mommy, goodbye daddy, sometimes never to see that loved one return. Uh, or welcome home mommy, welcome home daddy, and the balloons and the strollers and the ma homemade signs. And so those wonderful families that put steel in the backbone of our fighting men and women are so very important. Let's give them a round of applause as well. It's good to see all the dignitaries here. I, I noted, uh, maybe as you did, when Cheryl introduced some of the dignitaries, she said, all of the mayors. And she sort of said that with a note of pride. Uh, it is a, a point to be noted that we have all of the mayors here. We appreciate your support of these communities. Uh, I served before the Gander crash, and I served after the Gander crash. And from my perspective, the Gander crash was an inflection point in this community. It was a point at which we went from a, uh, being divided, perhaps, and a point uh, here in Hopkinsville and in Clarksville where soldiers were not always welcome. And, and then when Gander happened, we recognized we're all in this together, and we recognized the great tragedy and the pathos of that event. I write about it in Resilient Leaders because I thought it was so remarkable how these communities came together and how the division leadership led the units through crisis and then out to a much brighter future. And the good news is we mem memorialize that every day. Every time I drive uh, down Fort Campbell, I see those trees. Every time I'm here in Hoptown, I see those trees. 
Uh, and, and I know that, that there's equal representation in Madisonville. They have a new monument there just to, to all veterans. And so this is such a patriotic part of the world. And when that event happened, it only got better and better and better. And so today, I would unequivocally say this is the most supportive community uh, in the entire United States Army, United States military, wrapping arms around troops and families. So give yourselves a hand for what you do, please. <laughs> now, I'm here today to talk about uh, Colonel Wild Turkey Crozier. And I'm going to give some of my own observations. I'm going to give some other observations. Many of you could add to this. Uh, and, and then uh, we'll, we'll land the plane because I don't want to take too long because I know that they're going to give Wild Turkey a chance to comment, a, a chance to play back. And, and so we, I've been told that five minutes is about the right time for Wild Turkey to talk. And, but, but some of you know that that could be five hours. So, uh, so the caterers have arranged for, uh, for lunch and I think we're doing okay. Well, as mentioned, I was a, a young Lieutenant Dees and had been a Lieutenant uh, in the 503rd Infantry and then was brought up to be Tiger Honeycutt's aide. And uh, as Tiger's aide, uh, we had uh, a thrill a minute, and it was a double thrill a minute because Colonel Wild Turkey Ted Crozier was the Chief of Staff. Uh, and as the Chief of Staff, you know, I, I saw it from the bottom up. And he was this fearsome, passionate, gregarious uh, bearer of a man and he would sort of overwhelm you with ideas. In fact, uh, talking to Tiger Honeycutt, uh, Ted Crozier, you know, he says, Ted had a thousand ideas a minute and, and about one of them was good. <laughs> and and so, so you sort of had to sort out which one of those ideas was good because it was brilliant, uh, but you, you, had to find, uh, you had to find that one. Um, my first uh, memory, visual memory of, of uh, wild turkey was leading uh, ceremonies. You have never seen anybody uh, be so, uh, such a great performer, if you will, in a good way. Very military, strike, you know, Ted Crozier leading those honor eagles, bringing the colors forward and things. You've never seen such excellence. Uh, and in fact, Ted was so excellent that uh, I, 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 maybe I shouldn't tell this, but he had a pair of patent leather jump boots. And so <laughs> Ted, Ted wanted to be so striking things that in his patent leather jump boots, he would lead some of these wonderful ceremonies. Uh, and then Ted was also a great dancer. Uh, you, did anybody know that? Anybody know Ted? Okay, a lot of people, hands going up in the room. Ted was an awesome dancer, but Ted was before his time. The problem was they hadn't invented Dancing with the Stars yet, Ted. You would have been a wonderful, you'd been a, a, a no-brainer for Dancing with the Stars. So. So you, you were awesome, and for me, I just want to personally thank you because I was a young no-count lieutenant in the headquarters, and, and you mentored me as I observed you. You mentored me as we interacted with one another, and so I just personally thank you, and everybody here in, in their own way could probably thank you for your mentoring over the years. So let's give the first round of applause for Ted, please. Now, uh, as I've engaged with a few people, you say, well, how did Ted get his nickname? And I was unsure about it myself because I just, uh, I rolled in as a lieutenant and I said, wild turkey. And so I said, okay, wild turkey. Well, so I talked to an expert on this nickname who was Tiger Honeycutt, <laughs> quote. And, and Tiger said, well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's clear. That's because of the way Ted flies helicopters. And he said, have you ever seen a wild turkey take off? A wild turkey will wallow back and forth and finally gets airborne and finally gets flying. And, and so at least that's Tiger's version of uh, where wild turkey came in. Is that, that's true. And, and, so, and so here we have a man, Aviation Hall of Fame. Okay, he was the uh, colonel of the regiment of the aviation uh, brigade for uh, 27 years and he flies like a wild turkey. Something's wrong with that, I don't understand. No, no, but that's, uh, that's where his name came from. And then uh, also I would highlight that there was one other tiger story I can't pass up. You, you guys were together in Korea, Korean War. And uh, he tells me uh, about an instance where one night 
you had some guys, North Koreans, that infiltrated. And they're sort of inside your perimeter. And so here's Wild Turkey, Ted Crozier, with his 45. Okay, and he's chasing these guys out of the wire. I mean, he's just like a, a lion. Rrr. Tiger said, I've never seen such a courageous man. Now, the rest of the story, at least according to Tiger, my wife warned me. She said, you ought to precede all these stories with legend has it. So, <laughs> so legend has it that after the fact, after all the dust has settled, the adrenaline, uh, you know, gets down, uh, they checked a wild turkey's 45, and it wasn't loaded. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, he was change, chasing these guys around just to, they were, just as uh, fearsomeness, uh, they, they ran away. So, the tiger really did say, you're the most brave, courageous man uh, he's ever known. And that's quite a compliment coming from Tiger, as you know. And uh, so he has great respect for you, Ted, and he sends his greetings. Um, Ted's uh, leadership was recognized by many. He was the Army, uh, he's in the Army Aviation Hall of Fame. He's in the Infantry Hall of Fame. As I mentioned, Honorary Colonel of the Regiment. And I think the greatest award that we all bestow upon Ted is none of these plaques or anything, but our respect. We have great respect for the professionalism. We have great respect for the you living the Army values Ted Crozier, before the Army values were on dog tags or in cards on wallets, you lived them, you showed them to us, and so we appreciate that. And then after you retired, uh, you continued your selfless service. Uh, Mayor of Clarksville, we know that, and so you turned from a soldier into a statesman. You'd always had this statesman flair about you, and then as you took over uh, leadership within the community, uh, that continued uh, in a great way. And then I also, we also appreciate your advocacy for veterans, particularly the Fort Campbell Historic uh, Foundation and Wings of Liberty. And uh, we're prayerful that that will continue to progress and that, that we'll see that, uh, that uh, come to fruition. Robert E. Lee spoke about the, the quiet satisfaction that comes from a duty well performed. This describes you, my friend. You can be satisfied because you have performed your duty very well. You've been an incredible soldier. You've been a very effective statesman for those in the community and for those that need your help, the help of a, a political process, uh, and you've been a selfless servant. So we all honor you, Ted Crozier, uh, Ted Wild Turkey Crozier, and I would just say we love you and we honor you today, and let's give Ted another round of applause, please. Uh, General Days will introduce Colonel Crozier. Thank you. Well, uh, first, let me thank you that uh, uh, this uh, warms my heart to see that you're making a donation to the Chaplain's Fund. Um, just a moment. I would say, where would we be also without our chaplains? If there ever was a time in our U.S. military where we need faith in the foxhole and hope on the home front, it is today. And, and so despite some of the cultural winds that are blowing and some of the efforts to strip God out of this equation. I would just say, I for one recognize the importance of faith in the foxhole, and I for one want to make my time count, okay? <laughs> so with that, uh, we have the honor of uh, again introducing to you Colonel Wild Turkey Ted Crozier. Ted, it's over to you, my friend. Sir. I am certainly honored and couldn't be more honored than to be here with the soldiers. I had a four hour speech <laughs> prepared. I look at the heart pails and they say, Amen. I know how that is. Uh, but I would just like to say, that right here among you this morning, we have some real, real, real legends. And I'll cite a few, if I may. 
One is, uh, of course, our own Gary Love. And I said one time, you mean to tell me, Gary, that you got a PhD while you command the second and the seventeenth cab? He said, that's right, Chief. And I said, you're not working hard enough. <laughs> Boy, I've regretted that remark. <laughs> also here, we have the best, where's Tom Drew? The best gunman that ever lived. And that's Ron Perry. We could thank the stars for Ron Perry in the 101st. He was a magnificent, magnificent gunman. And seated over here on the far side is the best Chinook man that I've ever seen. He repaired all of the Chinooks that we got shot up all the time. <laughs> and that individual, as well as I, wound up with PTSD. I didn't even know what that was coming out of Korea. But I kept hearing about it during SAFE. Soldiers and families embrace. And then after a while I turned around to General Hugh Smith and I said, I think I have that PTSD also. <laughs> from Korea and from Vietnam. You noticed in the paper the other day, they, it didn't, uh-oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but I would like to take one second here and parrot what our commander has said from Afghanistan. Would you bow your head for one second to honor those heroes that passed away this, within the last month. Please join me. Thank you. And Maria, Denise, and all of the command group, our two mayors, delighted that you're here, and certainly I'll probably break something here right, right quick. Uh, I also look at the, look over there, and I say to Ron Perry's son, Jeff, when are we going to get the football team up there at West Point? And I'll say that to Jeff, my friend, General V. But I want you all to know that we had one right here in Fort Campbell. And we call it the Over the Hill Gang when we were challenged by Scully McCullough. Command Sergeant Major Scully McCullough when he was in the United Way. He said, would you all come down and try to help out the United Way in Clarksville? And would you play? Harvey Appleman played. Gary Luck played. We had a, a great football team, and we only beat the University of Tennessee Stars, Austin P. Stars, can't think of what, what the other stars, but 37 to 14, I believe. And they presented a great big trophy and it showed an ambulance up there and said, to the Over the Hill Gang. So I'm delighted by that. Uh, going back to my friend Bud Sherrill, Bud's lovely wife was my secretary as, as mayor. And I want everyone here to know I had a lovely head of hair when I went in as mayor. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Not true. But things were pretty tough at that particular time because we had 10% unemployment. We had 14% inflation rates. We had 20 some percent interest rates in the bank. And I think the only thing I could comment on my being mayor was, I must have done something right because we only had three banks in Clarksville. Now we have 11 or 12. So there had to be something working there. 
And then we annex a Bethlehem, my downfall. However, I felt like it was I felt like it was the right thing to do. And my comment was we need to fight in combat to come back and have somebody say we don't want you to annex us. So we did it anyway, but I had Bobby Good and Mary Jo Dosha came in and said, Ted, don't do it. If you annex St. Bethlehem, you'll be defeated. I said, we're going to annex them anyway, and we did. But we just brought in a $70 million shopping mall, Governor's Square, uh, and that upset a lot of people, but it also, mayors, bless you. Let's see, I get 20% of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am so honored, and as, as I think, as the shadows get longer for me, and my old buddies, Colonel Scotia Bob Jones, who jumped in Holland, and we went over there so many times every five years we would be in the hospital. And we marched in the parade. The 101st was the only military unit that ever marched in Eindhoven. Active duty. And I can, I can remember it now, but I won't relate that because that would take about another two days. And my other buddy, Art, the Godfather Lombardi, Bob Bees would be very polite about it. He said, the chief would nail somebody and then they'd go right on down and see the Godfather and he'd pass it by. But when it, I talked to him every night. Every night I would talk to Bob Jones. Every night I would talk to, to uh, Art Lombardi. And I'll see him on that far shore. And with Jimmy, Terry, and Savella saying, fly away. And when they sing, just stood close and walk with the, I'm coming, Bob Jones. What do we need? We need God in our marketplace. We need God in our government. And if we don't have that, we're all losers. And you are not losers. You're winners. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for this honor. You and Ted go back to the 1970s, am I correct? That's correct. So, yeah. How did you meet him, and what type of impact has he had in your life? Well, after some time as a lieutenant uh, in uh, an infantry unit, uh, I was the uh, aide to General Tiger Honeycutt, who's the assistant division commander, and Ted Crozier was the chief of staff of the division at the mm. time. And so I saw Ted on a daily basis, and uh, I, I, uh, I saw a lot of humorous things. Mm -hmm. I saw his character and his leadership and his courage. Uh, and then also I was very grateful that he was a, a mentor to me mm -hmm. and many others. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just a young lieutenant, but he invested in me and I'll be forever grateful and forever friend. What would you say uh, should be the takeaway for the average person uh, from this ceremony? What should they start trying to live out? Yeah, you bet. Well, I use the phrase by Robert E. Lee that says, uh, um, the quiet satisfaction of a duty well performed. And so Ted Crozier, above all else, performed his duty well. He was an outstanding soldier. He was an undying patriot uh, as the mayor of Clarksville and for other good causes, and basically was a selfless servant. Mm -hmm. So my message to the people that might be listening to this is that you can do no better than Ted Crozier as a man of faith, mm -hmm. as a man of family, mm -hmm. and as a man that served selflessly uh, in uniform and out of uniform for decades. Mm -hmm. We can do no better than emulate his example. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for your time. Tell me a little bit about what this event meant to you. 
Oh, this is this is what it meant to me was not honoring me. Right. It was honor, honoring the troops. Right. You know, they they are the best I've ever seen, mm -hmm. and I've seen them. I was in World War II, Korea, Vietnam. The troops are so much better now than they were then. Mm -hmm. And I was there with a bunch of old guys like the 101st. And uh, I was the only one that could sing Rendezvous, as mm -hmm. an example. So I taught the division band how to sing Rendezvous. And I had all of the battalion commanders and their wives on the general's birthday. And I, I said, how do I get them outside? I had the band outside, all battalion commanders and brigade commanders and their wives with song sheet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, General, we had the, we used to land helicopters right out in front of the, the headquarters, the old headquarters. Right. And uh, I said, we have a problem. And he <laughs> got up and ran, he beat me out there. Right. And uh, opened the door, everybody started singing happy birthday to you. He wow. said, and then to shorten what they, uh, he said when I retired, he said, a little bit of wild turkey goes a long, long way. <laughs> and that's true. Now, you were mayor of the city of Clarksville yep. back in 1978, if I'm correct? 79 to 87. 79 to 87. Uh, during that period of time, what what were some things that you really tried to uh, initiate in your term as mayor? I had 20 initiatives and, and well, look, like the uh, marina. Right. That was one of mine. Really? The museum in town. It's so successful in Clarksville. The mall? The, the mall. Mm -hmm. uh, the river walk? River walk, that's right. You couldn't even see the river. Mm. Uh, so I had them cutting, cutting these things down. Mm. All right, Dave, would you like to say anything else? Probably. <laughs> My five minutes are up, and I, every day, I, when I wake up, I thank my Lord. And then I say, she's got an awful funny name. She got it from her mama, just the same, same thing. Catalina Magdalena Rubensteiner Walter died. My Hogan Logan Logan was her name. And if I can't say that, I don't go outside. <laughs> He has two hairs right on his head. One of them's blue and the other one's red. Catalina Magdalene. Sir, how would you how would you want people? Uh, this this event was set up to honor you, uh, but your focus seems to be on people loving other people. Yep, that's uh, right. If you could have one takeaway that you want people in this community to start doing when they see this interview, love one another. Yes, sir. Everyone love one another.